final sort of sitting on the couch. The magnificent, the magical, the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. <laughs> There's not one ounce of acting in those final moments. Yeah, hearing the title of the series and the dialogue of the finale was one of the most clever and joyful moments of the last episode of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. This was a show that I always enjoyed, but it was kind of a casual viewer of. Like, I saw every episode, but I wasn't heavily invested in. So I was shocked at how invested I was first in this final season. I found I was really intrigued to see the next episode. And then I was very invested in this final episode. And I actually forget that wasn't the ending of the series finale, that there's still more to come after that. But Alex Bornstein revealed that that was actually the last scene for the actors. Amy made it so that the last scenes were like everyone was on stage. It was an ensemble. Oh. The marvelous Mrs. Maisel. On the very final words that were uttered, confetti fell from the ceiling oh, and champagne wow. flutes came oh, out. And we were all crying so much that the confetti stuck to our faces. <laughs> and Rachel Brosnahan shared some video from that moment on Friday when the final episode was released. It was hard to tell where my character's feelings began and mine ended. They all got very conflated. There were definitely a few tears that were shed. So yeah, the episode did go on from there, and we'll get to that, but I want to talk about the sequences that I loved. Oh, oh wait, Miriam. Yes. It's a long, circuitous, crazy journey. This is really wonderful. Thank you, Papa. Ultimately having to um, you know, making peace with embracing these 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 changes in his life. I love that. It was great that we had that moment between father and daughter and Emmy winner and Emmy winner. <laughs> but it was the scene or the sequence with the Emmy nominee that got me. Miriam is going to be on television. Uh, if she wanted me to be there, she would have called me and asked me herself. I've been a fan of Marion Hinkle ever since Once and Again. Remember that show? And her performance... I guess I have to say in the past tense now, was brilliant as Rose. I mean, they had a complicated, to say the least, relationship, right? And she was always asking for her mother's approval and just kind of respect. You go and tell me how she was. She said she's been calling you and the line has been busy for four hours. And you believe that? I'm deeply intrigued by this woman I got to play. The phone's absolutely not off the... She still feels like this other person that I want to know more of. So it's that's one of the reasons it's hard to say goodbye. But it turned out in the finale that Rose had a lot of people to say goodbye to, or at least hang up on. Well, that still doesn't prove anyone was trying to call. Hello. Rose, thank God. I've been trying to get you for the past four hours. Hello. Rose, finally, I've been trying you for hours. Hello. Hello, Mrs. Weisman. My goodness, you like to talk a lot on the phone. It was a nice way of getting Zelda back in there one more time. But yeah, it really made the complicated relationship that Miriam and Rose had come flooding back to me. Yes, and be there by- 8.15 if you want to get the Frisbees. I know, I heard. Thank you. There's so much that still surprises me about her. How long do we have? One hour. Let's go. And that led to that spectacular, almost one-shot sequence of Miriam's once disapproving parents running through the streets of Manhattan Find a light. I don't see a light. Do you have a whistle? Hello? Cat person? Anxiously trying to get to the studio to see their daughter do stand-up. I love being in the elements. I always, as an actor in film and TV, I yeah. love when that happens. Excuse me, are you available? Oh. Excuse me? Not me. Excuse me, we need a cat. Shift change, lady. I don't understand why you'd all change shifts at the same time. And you're sort of dancing with the light and the whatever may happen that day, the kind of... Um, uh, unknowing that whatever happen. obstacles, whatever's gonna happen. Yeah. We need a time, We I do not have a whistle. Sorry, lady. Excuse me. The joy of knowing that these two characters were gonna get to see their daughter do her thing, like you and I were feeling that Excuse going me. on. But it's very no. My daughter's gonna be on television. I just. Got that. I will pay you $10 to not change shifts. I remember we only needed like three takes of it, and I was like, no, 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 no. I got so many more I want to give. I offered that one my wedding ring, and nothing. Still, he wait, what? He looked at me like I was insane. How could you offer him your wedding ring that belonged to my great-grandmother? Dave, don't try to change the subject. I had so much, like, hope and joy as, I, as if I was heading to really watch Nedge perform. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, seeing Abe and Rose 
have so much pride at the end. I have to say, though not a word of any note has come out of your mouth, it is still very exciting to see you sitting on that stool. Thank you, Papa. It was wonderful to see. I just want you to know, I'm very touched. You had so many people ask me to come here tonight. Oh, it was supposed to be a big night for me. I didn't want you to miss it. Supposed to be? It is. It is a big night for me. And it led to this moment that Rachel shared a snapshot of on Instagram where everything just kind of stops for a moment and it's just back to Midge and a mic. But before it becomes Midge and a mic, she realizes there's a third party that's going to be affected by what she is planning to do. Susie, I have four more minutes left. Four minutes. Okay. Four minutes. You hearing me? Yes, four minutes. Four minutes. Four minutes, you got four minutes. Looking at you on the last day of shooting, we That's couldn't even awesome. rehearse that scene. Yeah. I'm thinking about doing something. Susie, something reckless that could go very badly for both of us. Yeah? How I did we do it? We like looked at each other's foreheads or something. I just, yeah, it was very hard to get through anything that last day. <laughs> So Miriam grabbed the mic and started her act. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Midge actually does her act for six minutes, and then there's the added thing on the couch. And I mean, not that it matters in the grand scheme of things, but I'm actually surprised, since they put such, such an emphasis on the four minutes thing, that her act wasn't four minutes. It was actually over six minutes. <laughs> but yeah, at over six minutes, with the last 90 seconds being one beautiful 360 shot, it was a lot of words for Rachel to memorize. She told Entertainment Weekly, that she knew that a wordy monologue was coming for that scene, but she didn't have the pages for it a day before they were supposed to shoot. She says, I was really starting to panic. Finally, Amy sent me the pages and figured out how to give me an extra day to learn it. I guess it was about 48 hours, not a whole lot of time. Lots of words, lots of fast talking, but I had a ton of support from Amy and Dan from our entire Maisel family who was on set that entire week from all our crew. It was a pretty special way to go out. And Alex posted a screenshot of Susie, Alex, looking at Midge, Rachel, on Instagram and wrote, The end is nigh. The final episode of Maisel is officially upon us. I have no words, only a lump in my throat. It hurts. Susie watching Midge, as you put it, land the plane, it felt the same as Alex watching Rachel. So yeah, the rose sequence, the taxi sequence, the stand-up monologue sequence are incredible, but that's not how the series went out. It's been a great night. I concur. We first got a flashback scene with Lenny Bruce, I guess people really like this character, and maybe it's because I'm not heavily invested in the series that I don't see his overall significance as much. But yeah, I don't get the whole anything. What makes you so sure I'm gonna be really famous? It's just a hunch. Yeah, I think that they did the best thing by being very sort of deft in their touch and nuanced in how, how much they brought him into the fray. I keep waiting for you to hook up with Lenny Bruce. I'm a little upset that that seems not to be happening. God, keep oh keep rewatching. <laughs> I never saw Miriam as finding a new love a big part of this series, so I found it odd that he ended up having so much significance in her life and in the series, because, yeah, he's part of these final moments of the series. I think my show course had turned your head. My head turned a long time ago. That's why I keep pulling to the right. Then we flash forward, as we have throughout the final season, to see Midge alone. And once again, I was a bit perplexed to why we were seeing this. Like, she made it. That was the point of the series. But all of a sudden, this footnote wants to show us that she's alone. She doesn't have a man in her life. I found that troubling, to be honest with you, because it all of a sudden seemed almost anti-feminist, saying all of a sudden, look, Miriam had a career, but she's alone, without a husband in the end. Like, very weird. Since there's no dialogue in that sequence, Rachel let EW in on what Miriam was thinking. She's proud and she's fulfilled. Is she happy? I don't know. And the show creator let Rachel in on some, I guess not backstory, but forward story, and told her that Midge would always look back on the day before Joel left her as the happiest day of her life. Was this as like, huh, what's happening here? As it was to me? Like all of a sudden, Miriam can't be happy if she doesn't have a man in her life? Like where's this coming from? That is ridiculous. That is ridiculous, not this entire conversation. Now the final, final moment, Miriam was alone on screen but had Susie to talk to. It was scary to do, to actually have our last on-screen moment together to not actually be on screen together yeah 
was disconcerting and was scary. Rachel did show us that at least on set, the two physically got to see each other in their old age makeup. A look that Rachel said on The View haunts her. Traumatizing. <laughs> I, I wish no one this experience of looking in the mirror. So the show ends with the two of them laughing together. When Rachel posted some behind the scenes shots from the show, Alex commented, smidge forever. Rachel returned the comment on Alex's farewell to Maisel Post, writing, we'll always have smidge. When speaking to the rap, Alex reconciled why that final moment worked. But maybe that's, you know, what it's about, is that these two were able to separate enough, have their own lives, and still have each other completely. And it's so satisfying. That's the word I would use. It's really satisfying. Satisfying? Yeah. But it leaves you with some questions. It leaves you with, with, with possible, you know, choose your own ending. Mm. Oh, oh, that's wow. interesting. Yeah, which I'm fine with. Like, I guess the big question that I don't think we get the answer to is who was Miriam's second husband? But yeah, the other questions are pretty insignificant. Like, they don't have really much impact. But yeah, I thought the first 59 minutes of this is so good, I'm just gonna forget <laughs> those final 11 minutes. But yeah, I wanna hear others' thoughts on this finale. Like, did you love that final flash forward? Did you take it as the show was all of a sudden looking down on Miriam for putting a career ahead of love? Back in November, when the show wrapped filming, Rachel Instagrammed this shot and wrote, this thing was lightning in a bottle. A cast, a crew, and creators who got the time travel for five years together. It changed my life. I'm eternally grateful. I'll have more words later, but for now. And she ended with the line that she does say in the finale, but some were surprised wasn't the final line of the series. Thank you and good night. <laughs>